So we're back for some more craziness. You know what? You're crazy. You know what? I'm crazy. You know what? We're all crazy. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. My name's G Sling. I'm doing my thing and I hope you are too out there. Today we're going to be talking about the Denver Broncos and this is going to be an interesting one. We have to go through this roster and break it all down and we're going to be mock drafting and talking about everything about it and doing all the fun stuff. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Von Miller, Jerry, Judy, this entire team. There's some good players to build around in this team. So let's go ahead and dive into some notable free agents, some guys that they brought in. And it all starts with bringing back Shelby Harris. You need to get him back, and they did on a three-year, $27 million deal. Not too bad at all. Really, really good interior defense alignment. You got to get him back, and they did. Ronald Darby, big pickup from Washington football team, and that was a very solid signing. Three years of $30 million. Not super expensive or nothing. $10 million a year, and only a little under $20 million guaranteed, so not too bad to get the Darby over into Denver. And now... We're going on to Mike Boone, who they bring in from Minnesota. Expect him to carve out more of a role. I think he's going to carve out a, a pretty decent role here. That They give him a two-year deal, a little over $4 million there. So uh, I like Mike Boone, man. Solid dude. Uh, you know, we'll see what he, you know, like I said, what kind of role he gets. But a dude that we'll keep an eye out on. Justin Simmons. This is another dude. You had to get Justin Simmons back. One of the best safeties in the league. And you do get him back there for the long-term on a four-year deal. Kyle Fuller, they bring him back with the Vic Fangio connection. He says, hey, come on, man. We got we to gotta roll back together. And they do just a little under $10 million. I don't know how it wasn't already $10 million. I guess he's like, you know what? It sounds better for the organization if I give you nine point five instead of ten or whatever. But, ah, oh, man, just give him $10 million. Jeez Louise. Anyway, Kareem Jackson is also back on a one-year deal. On to the roster breakdown now. And let's talk about this offense. First off, it all starts with the quarterback, Drew Locke. And what do I think about Drew Locke, man? I keep going back and forth on this because he's only played 17 and a half games in his career, man. It's crazy. You know, he played, what, like five games in his rookie year, and he played like 12 and a half or something like that this past season. However you want to count it, he only played like 10 snaps in one of the games. But Drew Locke will be back here, and we'll see if he is going to be the long-term option. I think that George Patton is going to be getting aggressive. At least that's what it sounds like. He's getting aggressive. He's going to be going after a quarterback in this draft. So with that being said, we will be targeting a quarterback because I do think they're going to do it. And I think that we at least need to bring in some competition because Drew Locke, hey, there's moments where it's like, oh, dang, this dude's a franchise quarterback. And then there's moments like, oh, my gosh, this is Mitchell Trubisky. I can't watch anymore. I got to turn off the television. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, Drew Locke is probably not going. He probably is not going to be the long-term option, but I do still like teeter, like give him one more year sort of situation. I think he deserves to be the starter next year, but we are going to be looking to get a quarterback. Other than that, though, you got Jeff Driscoll, Brett Rippon, and don't forget about Royce Freeman, too, at quarterback. He played a better quarterback, too. Yeah, let's not forget the COVID week. Anyway, that's your quarterback room. On to the receiving group. It all starts with Corlin Sutton coming back. Absolute must. He is going to be a welcome addition back. Other than that, though, Jerry Judy, one of my favorite players coming out of this past draft. I am a huge Jerry Judy fan, so I uh, might have a little bit of bias there. Anyway, I will be targeting him after fantasy. Let's keep it on the down low, even though I just said that. But it is what it is. Jerry Judy, if you can, you know, get those drops out of the situation. He had like 12 drops this past season. But he was getting open. That's the most important thing. The dude was getting butt naked open. He was wide open. And that's really what matters as a receiver. You know, he can go into the offseason and he can put some glue on those hands. He can get some catch some bricks. He can do anything like that and, you know, go through the Jerry Rice program. And I'm sure Jerry Judy will be better. He's a stud, man. Anyway, besides that, you get KJ Hamler, too. Here in the slot, he's just another one going into his second year. I think he can be a quality slot receiver. I uh, don't think he's going to be like a lead or nothing, but I think he's a fine slot receiver. Plus, you got Tim Patrick here who, in his own right, had a really, really good year. And, man, he's looking better and better each year. He's another dude to keep an eye out on, man. We'll have to wait and see if they want to pay him, put him, bring him back long-term going into his contract year. But Tim Patrick's a guy uh, who definitely is a very, very solid number four receiver. Other than that, though, you got Deshaun Hamilton, another Penn State dude, and he's, you know, more depth there. Tyree Cleveland, a seventh-round selection from Florida this past season. Deontay Spencer, backup slot there. 
So it's a very, very good receiving group. Plus, let's go over to the tight ends, which is really, really good too. Noah Fant's a really quality tight end. Like He's just continuing to get better and looks really, really good going into his third year. So I like Noah Fant quite a bit. And, I mean, you got some other dudes too. I mean, Albert O looked really good in a limited showing. Unfortunately, what did he tear his ACL or something like that at the end of the season? But uh, hopefully he comes back ready to go. I'm not going to say his full name for my embarrassment of uh, bad pronunciation. But you do have Troy Fumagalli. You had some cool names on this roster too, I will say. I went through, I'm like, dang, you got some cool names. Troy Fumagalli. You got Austin Schlotman, uh, if I'm saying that right. I don't know. But uh, you got some really, really good ones on here. But going back to this tight end group, we were talking about Troy Fumagalli. And I think he's a really solid tight end, you know, coming from Wisconsin. He was uh, really, really, I did some work on him with some tape. A Wisconsin dude could play, man. Anyway, uh, you know, I think he's going to be a serviceable tight end. I think on most rosters, you know, he's a, t a number two tight end, but they have him as like their, you know, their two, three tight end here. It's crazy how many good tight ends they have. You also got Jake Butt from Michigan. Solid. He was mainly a blocking tight end for him this year. So that's kind of round out your receiving group. I love it, man. I think they have a really, really good uh, dynamic receiving core here, uh, whatever you want to call it, receiving core. But let's go on to the running backs now, and it starts with Melvin Gordon. And this one, it's like, eh, you know, Melvin Gordon's a solid running back. Uh, you know, he's 27 right now. But, uh, you know, going into the last year of his contract, we'll have to look at a little bit of depth because you also got Royce Freeman on the last year of his contract as well. So they may well, he may want quarterback money, so they may not be able to pay him. <laughs> Mike Boone, as we were talking about earlier, is really, really solid. I think he's, he's going to have a good role here, actually. I think he, he's going to work into this. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Levante Bellamy, another dude here on this roster. Andrew Beck is their fullback. And as you see, Pat Shermer, the OC, uh, going on from there. I, you know, I always get Jason Garrett and Pat Shermer there. So I made sure this time I wrote it down and that way I don't, I don't know why I always seem to get those guys confused in life. I don't understand anything. Onto the offensive line though. The running back group's fine. I think it's fine. Uh, we'll look at some depth later in the draft, but I don't think it's an early round need or nothing like that. I think Melvin Gordon's just fine. Good running back with Royce Freeman and Mike Boone being there. You're in good shape. Onto the offensive line though. And I mean, I said it like though, but it's still a good offensive line for the most part. We got some question marks, but it starts with Garrett Bowles, who's a really, really good left tackle man. Had a heck of a season after getting that nice fat contract. He rewarded them with a very, very good season. On the opposite side, this is kind of where the question marks come into place. Juwan James opt out and, you know, he hasn't really played a whole ton in the past two years. So that's kind of one of those things. And, you know, they've kind of talked about his toughness and everything like that in the locker room. So we'll have to wait and see how that situation works out. But they have, you know, said that they're opening, him, you know, they're letting him, you know, they want him to come back and they're open to it. So you know how that always goes and that what they're going to say with the media and everything. But we'll have to kind of monitor that situation. I do think the offensive tackle position, we are going to be addressing that because there's just a little bit of uncertainty there after letting Elijah Wilkerson go too. On the interior of this offensive line, you have Dalton Reisner who is a solid player, man, just a solid guard, um, you know, obviously moved in from tackle from Kent State, and he's done, a, a, you know, an admirable job there. So just a good, you know, solid pass-protecting offense alignment, nothing too crazy there. You also got Graham Glasgow, who is another, just one of these guys who's really, really stout, really solid, just a year-over-year -year guy who's going to be, you know, doesn't get the Pro Bowl names or any of the All-Pro stuff, but he's just a really, really solid guard, so really like what they have there on the interior, well, on the guard position. Now, Lloyd Cushenberry, there's some question marks there a little bit, so we might want to, you know, consider backup options, but he was a rookie coming out of LSU, so let's give him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. Other than that, the depth is a little thin. You got Nite Muti, you know, fine. And then Austin Schlotman, as we were talking about. And then also Calvin Anderson at tackle is your backup there, is your swing tackle. So offensive line, we will be looking at finding at least one more offensive line to kind of rotate in this group, just in case, of course, with injuries. So that's your offense. Let's go on to this defense now. And it all starts, let's talk about this uh, defensive line here first because you know who it starts with, Devon Miller. And uh, hopefully he comes back ready to go and all that charged up from this past season not playing. So we're going to need him back with Bradley Chubb, who, who had a heck of a season this past year. Eight sacks, put up over 50 pressures. Heck of a season. Malik Reed also had a heck of a year too. I mean, not too bad himself. He put up over 30 pressures and eight sacks as well. So... A uh, couple of really, really good seasons from these guys. Bradley Chubb turned into a really, really solid elite edge defender. 
other than that, though, you got a you know not a whole ton of depth with Derek Tuska. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe just to drop a little bit of depth, but you got a good rotation between the four guys there. Other than that, though, the interior defensive line looks pretty stout. I mean, it's pretty solid. There's not tons of depth, but you got some good rotation. Deshaun Williams, Draymond Jones, you got Shelby Harris back, and then um, Matelvin Agim from Arkansas, the third rookie, third round selection. So it's a it's a decent rotation. I mean, you're seeing guys get better too. Like Deshaun Williams had a good season. Draymond Jones had a really good second year. So him going into his third year, you got Matelvin Agim going into his second year. You know, we'll see what they how you know how they work that rotation out. But it's a solid group. You know, Shelby Harris is a really, I mean, stout defender as well, as we were talking about. Mike Purcell is their nose, you know, fine. I mean, it's he's you know, he doesn't play a whole ton of snaps in general. It's a, he's a nose tackle, so I'm not too worried about it. Again, we'll look to find some more help there, but Isaiah Mack as a rotation. So that's your defensive line. Let's go on to this linebacking core, and it all starts with Alexander Johnson here as your, kind of your lead, you know, middle linebacker Mike sort of dude. You also got Josie Jewell, the uh, linebacker, going into his fourth season now. So you got a couple of guys, though, going into contract years. We will need to look at it long term. I know they drafted Justin Strednod, who, you know, we'll see if he can kind of develop and whatnot. What was he from Wake Forest? Something like that. I think he was a Wake Forest dude, like fifth round selection or something, somewhere around there. Josh Watson, more depth here, special teamer type of dude. But that's your linebacking core. It's a solid group, but I think long term we're going to have to look at it because obviously Alexander Johnson, Josie Jewell are both going to be free agents after this season. Other than that, let's go on to the secondary now, and we'll talk about what they've done. Bringing in Ronald Darby and Kyle Fuller. Great, great additions. Kind of shores up that outside for sure, at least for this season. Ronald Darby's on a three-year deal. Kyle Fuller only on a one-year deal, but at least it kind of gives you some time and some flexibility. You got Bryce Callahan, who's also going into the last year of his contract. So, you know, again, long-term, kind of have to look at it. But you got some guys between Mike Ajamata, who they drafted this past season in the third round. Keep an eye out on him. You got some other names, Insane Bassey, who, again, struggled. Same with Mike Ajamata, struggled a little bit in the first years, but they're rookies, so give them some time to develop. Duke Dawson, Kevin Tolver, uh, what is he going into his third year now from out of LSU? Nate Hall Harrison and Perel uh, Mudley, another rookie there from Oklahoma, undrafted. But that's your your cornerback group. It looks really good between Darby, Fuller, and Bryce Callahan. Not Henry Callahan, but that'd be pretty cool. I'm feeling kind of lucky anyway. <laughs> um, no, actually, you know, that'd be kind of crazy. I don't want to mess with Henry Callahan. But Bryce Callahan's a really, really good corner out here as well. At safety, you got Kareem Jackson, who's, uh, you know, solid safety. I mean, really been stout his entire career. Just really, really good there. And Justin Simmons, man. Just a really good safety group. But... Kareem Jackson is getting older now, and he is in the final year. Well, they just re-signed him to a one-year deal, so you know what I mean. And he's like I said, he's getting older, so we have to look at that long-term. As Justin Simmons, I think he's pointing to the wrong person. You're pointing to the wrong person, man. You're over there. Come on, man. Anyway, it's my fault. Other than that, though, that is your defense. So on the defense, we're going to be looking at finding some more linebacker depth and then also some secondary in that back end in the safety department. Maybe some more into, you know, defensive line depth. But for the most part, that's kind of your your defense. Let's take a look at this uh, team, the team needs now. And it all starts with the quarterback position. I put a question mark because I know Drew Locke. It's like some people, you know, like Drew Locke. And I do kind of want to give him one more chance. But at the same time, you know, this quarterback draft class looks really good. And, you know, when you have guys like Trey Lance or Justin Fields potentially falling, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't pass up on that, especially if it's Justin Fields like, or even Trey Lance. I think Trey Lance has just as much upside. He might, you know, be my number two quarterback in this draft class. I don't know. It's so hard, man, but he has that upside. So quarterback will be an area we are looking at. Free safety, as we were talking about, or just a safety because they play a lot of split safety. So um, that's really kind of what I'm seeing there. Other than that, linebacker, we need to go ahead and think about the future and get a good linebacker offensive line as well because we don't know about Jawan James. Could be a trade. Now, I know if you trade him, it's like 13, or actually, if they cut him, it's a 13, 19 million cap it. If they trade him, it's like 13 million, but they can cut him after post-June uh, first for still only 13. I don't know. It's so confusing, man. But either way, it's going to be a big cap hit, so unless they trade him. Depth, uh, you know, that's really kind of with everybody. Here's their draft picks. So let's go ahead without further ado and get on to who is the honorary commissioner for the day. It's going to be Shannon Sharp. 
<laughs> oh dang, I didn't mean to make Shannon cry. That's crazy. Anyway, Shannon Sharp, one of it's just a legend, man. A TV legend, a football legend, crazy, and one of the best dressers, man. God, I got man. Look at that suit. Un anyway, let's go ahead and skip to the draft. And uh, sorry, it was a bad pun. And let's go on here to the first selection, and they're going to be taking. Trey Lance, the quarterback from North Dakota State, the Bison quarterback, coming over here. It's very fitting. He comes to the Denver Broncos, and uh, yeah, from Bison to Broncos, I don't know, whatever. But Trey Lance gonna be the pick here. It's just too talented not to take a shot at Trey Lance. You know what I mean? When you see a guy like Trey Lance and that upside that he does bring, he can be someone. I mean, with this team as talented as they are, as a solid. I mean, they got some holes, just like every team. But it's a very talented roster full of some young studs, especially on this offense, man. You got, obviously, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Noah Fan, Albert. I mean, you got some studs, man. And let's go ahead and finish that off by finding a stud quarterback with that elite arm talent, man. He's going to be able to throw Jerry Judy some 70-yard bombs out here. Uh, so Trey Lance is going to be the quarterback. Now, again, I don't make trades or anything, but they probably would have to trade up for Trey Lance. But we'll use our imagination, and uh, we'll get Trey Lance here at number 9. Ready to shine. On to the second round pick here. And we're going to be taking linebacker Nick Bolton. And I, I know you're saying, you're thinking, Nick Bolton in the second round? No chance. But you know what? I think he's going to fall. You know, it's it, it's very fitting. And it seems like it's very, uh, you know, I impossible. But every single time, every single time, the good linebackers, man, are the good players. But they don't have the great speed or nothing like that. They always end up falling. And let's face it, I mean, he's still a 4'6 guy. Okay, he's still a solid speed. I know he put up like 4'5'9", but he's more 4'6 sort of dude. He's not going to be this burner. He's not sideline to sideline. Again, Jameen Davis, JOK, Micah Parsons, they're all going to get selected over him. You know, maybe even Baron Browning might. Like it said, that's that crazy. And he probably won't. But nonetheless, you know what I'm saying. Like Nick Bolton, he's going to probably fall to the second round just because he's not that superb athlete. But his coverage instincts, man, his just play recognition is just insane. And you get him here in the second round, and he's going to be an absolute monster for the long term in this defense. Nick Bolton. On to our third round selection now. It's Jackson Carmon, the dude from Clemson protecting Trevor Lawrence. And that blind side is now coming over here. And I think he can be a good right tackle. I know he played only left tackle. But I think he absolutely can be a good right tackle or a swing tackle to start his career off. And you roll from there, you know, you figure something out. But, uh, you know, if you wanted to move this guy into guard, you know, if you needed him to, I'm sure he could do that. Talented enough. Solid mover for his size, too. Can, you know, it's got a good enough movement, can definitely move. So there you go. Jackson Carmen in the third round to solidify that offensive line. So moving on now to our fourth round selection, we're going to be taking Sean Davis, the safety from Florida. And this guy, man, he's just a really solid safety. I think he's absolutely a perfect scheme fit here. In this split zone coverage, you put him on one side of the field. He, I, he can play free safety. He did it at Florida, really solid in single coverage as well. So if you wanted him to do that, and they do that, obviously, still, I mean, and whatnot. But he's going to be a really, really solid split zone safety. Put him on one side of the field. He's going to be able to do a great job here. And uh, got that solid build, dude, too. Built like a rock, so uh, getting him out here in the fourth round as your development safety. And you know what? I think he actually can come in and be a starting role sort of player midseason. On to our next pick here. We're going to be going Malcolm Kuntz, the dude from Buffalo, the edge rusher here. A little bit small, but you know what? Actually, I mean, not that small. Six foot two, 249 is not too bad at all. He comes in here. And, you know, he's got good size to speed and bend and everything you look for from that edge, that outside 3-4 sort of dude. You get him in here as some more rotational depth with Vaughn Miller, Bradley Chubb, and Malik Reed. On to our sixth round selection now. We're going to be going Austin Philo, the dude from Oregon. And he's going to be this interior defensive line, just kind of run stuff, a rotational guy, two-gapper, uh, stout interior defensive lineman. Uh, so that's really kind of what it is here. I mean, just trying to find some more depth on that defensive line. On to our seventh round selection, or one of our seventh round selection, because I think we got like three of them. Carson Green, the green machine here. He is coming in, and now he's going to be rolling over here into Denver. From Texas A&M, he was their right tackle, but I think he's more of a guard at the next level. I don't see him being a right tackle. I just don't think he's got the movement skills. But keep him in that closed window as your depth piece there. You're, you know, looking in better shape there. 
On to our next seventh round selection, we're going to be going with Rakeem Boyd, the running back from Arkansas. And this guy, man, he's got some speed, man. He hits the home run and he's gone. He's hitting it, you know, and uh, it's, it's going to be a fly ball into center field and there's nobody catching him out there. Rakeem Boyd's got some speed. You go ahead and it's a good combination with what you have with Melvin Gordon and Royce Friedman. So get Rakeem Boyd. On to our final pick, and we're going, I almost said Jerry Jones, Jerry Jacobs from Arkansas, back to Arkansas with this final pick, and this guy is a nice development corner, fits their mold and kind of what they like to do here on defense, but can play man, can play zone, but a nice solid zone corner to come in, and uh, that 5'11", 200 pounds built of rock there. Now let's go ahead and get into what it looks like now after the draft, the roster after the draft. And it all starts with what we did at quarterback. Getting Trey Lance, the strong arm QB that, you know, is going to be able to run for probably 500 yards too in his rookie. Wouldn't surprise me if actually if he ran for like 500 yards or something like that in his rookie year. Nonetheless, he's going to use his legs quite a bit. Trey Lance is built like a bowling ball. But he's going to be the quarterback here. And, uh, you know, Drew Locke will probably start for the first couple weeks. And then, you know, when things <laughs> don't go so well, Trey Lance is coming in and hopefully we'll save the day. But, you know, this is no Superman stuff out here. But Trey Lance, we'll have to wait and see how that works out. But got to take a chance there. Other than that, though, we get Jackson Carmine to be some more depth on this offensive line for injuries or whether or not, of course, Juwan James comes back. And if he's ready to go, you get the green machine, Carson Green, out there on to that offensive line is a little bit more in depth. Rakeem Boyd is kind of that, you know, that full on, you know, speed back sort of dude, you know, some more depth there as well. Other than that, though, that's your offense. Let's go on to this defense now. On defense, we make some changes to Nick Bolton coming in at this linebacking position can add some more depth first off from day one, but going to be that long term replacement to Alexander Johnson or Josie Jewell, whoever they let go for the future. Nick Bolton is going to be that guy who, you know, absolutely going to have a role early on, too, in his career. Sean Davis, who, you know, Justin Simmons now pointing, I don't know what he's doing. But anyway, Sean Davis is added to the secondary, and that's going to be a good long-term option as well there. And, you know, rotational piece going forward. Malcolm Kuntz and also Austin Philo on that interior of the defensive line adding some more depth across that roster, which you always got to do, man. You have to have the depth. Jerry Jacobs at corner, adding another corner, but just because, hey, you can always add corner, man. You always need to add corner, I feel like. So that's your roster before and after. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. You'll have to let me know, did I screw up? Did I make some bad decisions? Did I make bad calls? Or uh, am I on point? Or is everything good? I don't know. What would you do different? That's really about it, though. I hope everybody has a super fire day, man, and do something crazy. You got to do something crazy. Go break some rules out there. Anyway, my name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing, and I hope you do too. And pop.